guys, Mr. Brackenberg here. This is lesson 3.2. In this video, we're going to focus on angle pairs that are created with parallel lines and a transversal. So here we've got a pair of parallel lines, and we know they're parallel because they have those red arrows on them. And we've got our transversal running between our two lines, creating those eight different angles that we talked about in 3.1. We're still going to be talking about those same exact angle pairs, corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior, and also consecutive interior angles. But now there's going to be a new relationship between those things because our two original lines are parallel now. If we start with our corresponding angles, the relationship corresponding angles are going to have is that they are congruent. So if we take a look at our picture, there's four pairs of corresponding angles. and all of those pairs are congruent. So angle one is congruent to angle five, angle two is congruent to angle six, three and seven are congruent, and also four and eight are congruent because they're corresponding angles. Our next pair of angles that we talked about were alternate interior angles. And their relationship is that these are also congruent. So we've got two pairs of alternate interior angles in our picture. We've got angles three and six, those things are gonna be congruent, and we've also got angles four and five, those angles are also congruent. Our next angle pair that we talked about was alternate exterior angles. And much like the other angle pairs that we've talked about so far, these are also congruent. So in our picture, we've got two pairs of alternate exterior angles. We've got angle one and angle eight, those are congruent, and we've also got angle two and angle seven, those angles are congruent. Our last angle pair was consecutive interior angles. These ones aren't gonna be congruent, these ones are different. These are supplementary. And remember, supplementary means they add up to 180 degrees. So we've got two pairs of consecutive interior angles. We've got angle three and angle five, and we've got angle four and angle six. Those pairs of angles will add up to 180 degrees. So let's take a look at this example. We've got two parallel lines, and we're looking at the measure of two of those angles. Over here, we've got three X minus 30, and down here, we've got 120. First thing we're gonna decide is what kind of angle pair is this? Then, based on that angle pair, we'll look at the relationship between the angles and set up an equation that we can go through and solve. So if we take a look at these, these are two angles that are between those two parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. So these are alternate interior angles. And remember, the relationship between alternate interior angles, when our two original lines are parallel, those two angles are congruent. So if we're going to set up an equation that we can go through and solve, the angles being congruent means that their measures are equal. So we can set up an equation that says 3x minus 30 equals 120, and then we're just going to do some algebra solving. In order to get rid of the minus 30, we're going to add 30 to both sides. So we end up with 3x equals 150. In order to get rid of the 3 in front of our x, we'll have to divide both sides by 3. So we end up with an x value of 50. In our last example, we've changed the picture just a little bit. We've still got our two parallel lines with the transversal running through them. Now we've got this angle 5x and this 120 degree angle. These are between our two parallel lines and on the same side of the transversal. So these are consecutive interior angles. And remember, the relationship with consecutive interior angles is that they're supplementary, meaning that they add up to 180 degrees. So the equation we can set up is 5x plus 120 equals 180. And then again, we're gonna do some algebra solving. First thing I would look at is subtracting this 120 over to the other side. So we end up with 5x equals 60. Then the last thing we need to do is get rid of that five. So we'll divide both sides by five. And we get x equals 12. That's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching.